Now presenting Fedora in Education, Nemanja Milošević. So I guess this works. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, uh, this is a talk Fedora in Education. First, uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Nemanja. I'm here from Novi Sad. I uh, work as a teaching assistant on uh, Faculty of Sciences. I teach, uh, if it matters, databases, uh, artificial intelligence, and computer networks. So if you want to discuss any of those topics, feel free to, feel free to uh, hit me up. Mm. I'm also a Fedora ambassador in Serbia. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Fedora community in Serbia. And uh, the main uh, reason why I'm giving this talk is I want to share my experience with uh, managing uh, the Fedora classroom, as we call it, with uh, 24 uh, workstations for students and one workstation for the professor or the lecturer, and uh, how we migrated from the uh, older system. I'm going to talk about a little bit about that and how we manage uh, how we manage the classroom and what are some difficulties we had and uh, some uh, cool stuff we did. So just briefly, I want to uh, talk about our community here in Serbia. Uh, if you are in Serbia during uh, when Fedora is released, you can visit uh, us at one of our uh, release parties. We, as you can see, we had uh, three already. So uh, for Fedora 24, 25, and 26, the, for the Fedora 27, we will have a party in uh, about a month and a half from now. So at these events, we try to gather students, and ev everyone is welcome to come uh, to, to hear what is new in Fedora, to talk about Fedora with us, uh, to share some experiences, in, uh, what can we improve, what can we do better. You can also reach us uh, on Twitter at Fedora uh, Serbia. And you can also find us at Freenode at Fedora-RS uh, channel. So we have two Fedora ambassadors in, uh, in Serbia. Uh, we have Momčilo, which is, well, who is uh, somewhere around. I don't know where he is. And myself. And uh, our community, the organizing uh, and uh, uh, how, how can I put this? Helper community is, uh, I think, five or six people now who are actively contributing to Fedora. I'm also uh, uh, managing uh, to uh, package some software for Fedora. And uh, we have some cool tablets uh, who are running Fedora. I also did those. So you can, if you are interested, you can talk, uh, talk with me about that. OK. So uh, using free open source software in education is, I believe, very important. Here are some reasons. The first, obviously, is the ability of students to uh, inspect and learn from software they use. So if they're interested in how something works, they can use it. And with proprietary software, it is impossible because we don't have the source code. Uh, another, in, uh, another important reason is there's no licensing problems. So when students graduate, they can just continue using the software we taught them to use, which is great. They don't have to learn something new just because they don't want to pay for the software we're using because it's free. Uh, Another very important reason is that uh, students this way get involved uh, through events or through talking about open source software with uh, the open source community. So I'm very proud to say that we converted, I think, 10 or more people to use Linux in general, mostly Fedora, but some other distributions as well, because they are tired of using something else. Uh, another important reason is uh, that uh, free open source software is more adjustable to needs of lecturers, the needs of students. So if we don't like something, we can change it. Where in, in proprietary software, it is, of, of course, impossible. So that's why uh, I think it's very, very important to talk about using free open source software in, in education. Uh, so the, our project to convert our classroom, uh, the classroom is called RC3, which stands for Computer Center 3 in Serbian. We have 25 machines there. They're pretty powerful. Uh, and new. They have uh, Core i5 Intel CPUs, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and NVIDIA graphics. Yes, you can run Fedora on NVIDIA graphics, even though the drivers are proprietary. It's, it's possible. We are not actually using open source drivers, because uh, the, I think there are NVIDIA 710 
GPUs and I don't think they work that well with open source drivers. So we are using the RPM Fusion drivers with, with, with uh, Fedora 25 at the moment. Uh, the previous solution we had in the classroom was that uh, we used U Ubuntu hosts, which was fine, but we uh, thought it would be good to uh, separate somehow uh, so that students from one class can't access data from student from other classes. So we uh, used virtual machines. We thought it would be a good idea, but there were some shortcomings. Uh, the main reason why we use Windows in VirtualBox machines is because we didn't want to throw something at students that they aren't familiar with. We are afraid that it's gonna take a, it's gonna have a high and steep learning curve. But it was proved wrong uh, after. So some of the main issues we had was uh, the boot times. So you boot up the machine, and then you have to boot up a virtual machine, and it takes like between five, maybe ten minutes because these uh, machines don't have solid state drives; they just have plain old uh, hard drives. So uh, another issue that I didn't list here is that students often forget to close virtual machines after they're done with the class. So we were running out of RAM after a full day of classes because there were like five or six virtual machines running at the same time. Uh, it was very difficult to uh, distribute files, which is much easier now uh, when running uh, just uh, Fedora Linux. Uh, both ways means that uh, it's difficult to pull files from the machines and it's difficult to push files to machines. Um, it was also very difficult to uh, uh, update or install new software when it's all set up because uh, it would require either updating the virtual machines from the virtual machines or just uh, scrapping the old images and putting new ones, which is also very bad. The good thing was that uh, almost all software we used in teaching was open sourced. Uh, we teach computer science students, so most of the software we use is uh, based on Eclipse. So uh, whether it's just for uh, Java development or it's for C development, the, I, I would say 80% of the classes use some sort of Eclipse environment uh, for modeling, for uh, developing, for everything. Uh, there was some software which uh, wasn't compatible, but we found an alternative which was compatible. Uh, we decided to not use virtual machines because they were too slow, and instead of that, we used uh, separate user profiles and the configurations for every uh, class. So when you, uh, as a student, come to cl the classroom, there are, I think, 15 or even more now uh, user accounts, and you log in uh, to one of the class you're using, and everything is set up there. Um, so why did we choose to use Fedora? Uh, we wanted to have the latest software. That's the main reason. So uh, with uh, new kernels, we had full hardware compatibility out of the box, apart from the NVIDIA drivers. Uh, Almost all development tools are available in the official repositories and there were fresh versions. So we can just update the machines regularly and get, always have the latest version, no management issues there. We were also familiar with, with the whole family of uh, RPM-based distributions because most of the servers we use at the faculty are actually CentOS. Uh, obviously good documentation and support and of course fully free and open source software, nothing proprietary there. So nothing to worry about. That's why we chose, we chose Fedora. Another reason why we chose Fedora is that it is actively used in education, not just us, but many other people who we can uh, ask about some issues they're having. We even have a Python classroom lab, which is like a live uh, Fedora uh, modified distribution, which has everything you need for teaching students Python, which is very cool. So this is how the classroom looks like. Uh, this was uh, when we first set it up. So this is the default Fedora 24 wallpaper. Uh, there are 24, you can only see eight, and one uh, at, the, at the chair there where the professor sits, or the lecturer. This is the featured uh, article on Fedora magazine where we, there is in detail, in-depth look and how and what uh, we did and what were some issues and how we overcome those. Um, so how did we do it? Did we, do it? Uh, we prepared one workstation. 
and we use Clonezilla to clone it to all the rest because they are all virtually the same. It's just a matter of preparing one and cloning it to the others. We first wanted to do it through the network, so set one machine as, as host machine and just boot Clonezilla on everything and just pull it through the network, but it was, uh, it was too slow because the network in our classroom is uh, just 100 megabits. So what we did is use two people with uh, four USB fast, USB 3.0 drives where, where, where we put the images and we found one uh, old one gigabyte drive because there's this cool thing in Clonezilla where you can boot it to RAM and pull the, pull the USB drive. So just, it was very, very, sim very simple and it took us only an hour and a half to fully, fully set up the whole classroom because it was very, very quick. The image, I think, was around 12 gigabytes, so it's, it's not even that, that big. Uh, we lost a lot of time in this, in this one hour, 25 minutes on setting up host names because we wanted to set host, name, uh, host names uh, to a rule, to a naming convention. I'm going to show it later. So we can easily access it, access the machine uh, just with its host name. So uh, we would like to find a way, I don't know if Clonezilla can, can do it, to automatically uh, set the host name after, uh, after uh, restoring the image. That would be really, really great. So the configuration was very simple because we just use the, the same image on, uh, on all the workstations and we decided to call them RC3, which is the name of the classroom, dash, and then number. So it was 1, 2, uh, 2, 24. Uh, the main management and uh, lecture workstation uses a different name, so there's no confusion there. Uh, because the classroom is isolated from the, uh, from the rest of the network, mostly isolated, we still have uh, internet access, uh, we manage the, all the classroom from that one machine. So for management, and the main part of, of, of this uh, talk is how we manage uh, this, uh, this classroom. We have a set of Python 3 scripts that you can find them on this link. They need some TLC. I just recently realized that the comments are in Serbian, so I'm going to fix that probably today or tomorrow. Sorry about that. Uh, we use the net, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, net Miko or Paramiko front-end SSH module which basically allows you to do anything SSH related in, in Python 3. Which is, it's a really uh, mature and very, very good uh, library for that. So some of the things that the script can do, uh, it can check uh, whether some workstations are on. It can turn off everything. Uh, it can use X11 uh, VNC to spy on students, so during tests, things like that. Uh, and probably the most uh, used uh, function of it is to execute any command on all the workstations, which is the most important, uh, the most important part. So some cool stuff we did with the scripts. Uh, my, my favorite thing is that uh, we use the locally seeded torrents for distributing very large files. For example, I get an email on Friday saying there is going to be a work. Uh, uh, there's going to be a summer school or some uh, workshop on Monday, and uh, they send me the vi uh, v uh, virtual machines, which are in the 10 gigabyte uh, size range. And uh, I don't know if, you've, if some, someone used locally see the torrent, but they are in incredibly fast and easy to set up. Uh, no tracker is needed, uh, uh, nodes recognize each other and you just see it on one machine, on the management machine, and it's like uh, 10 gigabytes in, I think, 15 minutes to get it all over, oh, sorry, uh, to get it all over the, the entire classroom. Uh, obviously, uh, it's very easy to do updates uh, on, uh, or install any software uh, on, on all the workstations. Uh, the main, also, one of the main uh, things we use is for uh, just getting and uh, sending files to all machines, which is, very, very common when you need something to, to give to students or after the test, for example, to get uh, the, the, the solutions from all the machines. It's much easier now than it was before where students would have to, uh, to, to log in somewhere, upload files and things like that. And uh, the most loved feature uh, from, uh, from all the teaching staff is uh, turning off all the workstations. That was the first thing that was implemented. Why? 
Well, when you're tired and it's 8 p.m. and all the lectures are done, you would have to manually turn off all the machines. But now you just press a button and wait around a minute and everything is off and you can go. Okay. So some future work we have planned. We would really love to uh, be able to uh, wake all the machines at once. So, for example, we don't want to lose any time when the tests or uh, some things like that are, are uh, on. So we just want to use wake over LAN to wake all the machines at the same time, which shouldn't be too difficult, just needs setting up. Uh, we would also like to do scheduled updates, so we can just schedule uh, wake all the machines at, at, at some Saturday during uh, weekend or some, some convenient time and just do updates or whatever it's needed on all the machines, so no, no one has to be there. Um, our uh, projector or beamer is connected over HDMI, so we would really love to be able to turn off, because usually it happens that someone forgets to turn it off and things like that, so we, we can implement something to control it, turn it on, turn it off over HDMI uh, CAC. Uh, the, the, the last two points are, uh, are already been discussed. Uh, we would really love to provide meta packages for, for our students, so our students can say, for example, uh, install uh, Introduction to Computer Science, and everything they need will be pulled from their official repositories. Why are they called meta packages? Because they don't actually have anything in them. They're just a list of all the packages the students need, so we just separate them by, uh, by classes, and, uh, and uh, students can install them uh, easily. Another important point here is that if, the, if there is some setup needed after that, we can also put it in the RPM package. For example, if you want to uh, use uh, software for dat databases one, we can, for example, ask you if you want to set up the uh, connection strings and things like that automatically, so that will save a lot of time. Our end goal with, uh, with using Fedora uh, at our university is to create our special Fedora spin. Fedora spins are uh, repackaged Fedora official sort of official uh, images where you can, uh, there's a very nice tool set where you can create what packages do you need in advance and just uh, make images and give them to students so they can boot them either live and use them or even install them and use them with all the tools they, they need. So, the, the, the main takeaway here is that uh, we believe at University of Novi Sad and at my faculty uh, and department, we think it's imperative to teach computer science students about free open source software. Uh, it's very bad if students get used to proprietary software and I think it's the only thing that's, th that's out there. We uh, try, to, try to encourage them to, to, uh, to contribute, to learn about open source software and use it, first of all. Uh, Managing to, uh, uh, migrating to a uh, Linux compatible software in teaching is very good, very, it was very easy. Uh, almost, as I said, almost all software we use was uh, already open source, but uh, there are very good alternatives. Just if you look hard enough, you will find something that you can use. Uh, management is uh, very easy. I manage the, the, the entire parcel myself. And uh, the main, the main uh, uh, reason and uh, the Greatest benefit is that uh, the systems are completely stable. There's no downtime. There's no losing time. Performance is great. Uh, there's no more uh, virtual machine uh, boot time lagging and things like that. So that's that's uh, that's very important for us. Now I have uh, one Fedora winter cap, and I have one Fedora T-shirt. Very rare, very rare. So any questions? First to obviously get the get the Fedora swag. So anything you want to ask, I'm here. Uh, why do you think that Fedora is better than Windows on universities? Uh, well, it's a it's a. We, we are not trying to force anyone to migrate. I mean, if, it, if, if someone can use uh, Windows and op, uh, operate it uh, as easily as we can uh, operate Fedora, then by all means use it. But first of all, we believe that it's important to, for our students to get a sense of there, there is free open source software and they should use it because 
it's not proprietary, and they can inspect it, and they can learn a lot more from using Fedora than using Windows. And the other most important reason for us is that it is still easier to manage uh, Linux machines than Windows machines. Thank you. So do you want the cap or the t-shirt? Hello. Uh, was it hard to get students to know GNOME Tree because it's pretty different than... Uh, yeah, we, we, we had actually a discussion what desktop environment to use and we decided to go with GNOME Tree because it's the default one. Uh, it wasn't actually that difficult. There was some getting used to it. Uh, for example, the activities overview and uh, things like that. But we installed some extensions which help Windows users, for example, the application uh, menus and uh, the alternative alt tabbing and things like that. So it seems more familiar, but if they were to find some plain GNOME 3 uh, workstation, they would still manage to find everything. Yeah. But they actually liked using it because it's, you know, fancy graphics and things like that. Yeah, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. More questions? Uh, well, I have a question. Uh, it's not related to using Fedora in education, but it's like in general. How did you decide to, to go with Fedora and not some other uh, Linux distro? Uh, the main point for us with using Fedora was uh, we had actually two things. First, we were familiar with the whole ecosystem. That's the first thing. And the other thing, we always want the latest development tools. You can use any other Linux distribution, and it would probably work as good as Fedora in this situation, but you would probably end up at, I need some development tool which is new, and I have to install it manually rather than just using. So the freshness of the packages, and the Fedora strikes a really nice balance between being too new and being too old but stable. So it's right at the point between stable and really new and stable. So that's a really nice uh, uh, ground for us for teaching. Yeah, okay, so uh, would you say it's more like, I don't know, open source or Arch Linux? It's, it's, it's I think it's between. in the middle, yes. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, are you using uh, local user accounts or you're using some kind of directory? And have you tried maybe integrating Fedora with Windows Active Directory? Uh, we are using local accounts. So the way the scripts work is the password isn't stored anywhere. But because the pass because the all machines are cloned, the, the, it's the same password. And only one account has SSH account with SSH access. So when the script is started up, it asks you for a password. It doesn't check it over anything. But if you type it correctly, it will execute everything correctly. Otherwise, it will just say SSH uh, denied. Well, we want to migrate to using keys. But for the moment, this is working fine for us. And passwords aren't stored anywhere, so it's yeah. more questions. OK, I have uh, one, question for my, one question for myself, because I, I wanted to see if someone is going to, uh, was going to ask it. So uh, when talking to some people about what we did. The first questions I got were, uh, have you heard about this thing called Ansible uh, for managing a large number of nodes? Uh, Ansible is a machine management software. We can install it on many machines and control them. So I want to ask, why aren't we using Ansible here? First of all, I think uh, reading through documentations of, uh, uh, documentation of Ansible, I think it's still a bit overkill for us to use it because our scripts are still very simple. And the other, actually, the main reason is because when we were setting up the, the classroom, we didn't know about Ansible. So maybe if we knew, we would use it. Uh, if you're going to manage a classroom, you should definitely consider uh, using Ansible because maybe it would be easier for you than it was for us even further. This was very easy. Maybe that is very, very, very easy. OK, thank you for your attention. Uh, also, I just want to say that uh, we, all, uh, we have some swag left at Fedora Boot, so feel free to stop by and grab it all. OK, thank you.